trust me, he says. This is going to be the difference between becoming good and becoming great, he says. <laughs> hey, everybody. My name's Mark. Welcome back to 2,000 Hours of Banjo, a channel dedicated to documenting the first 2,000 hours of practice, trying to learn how to play this instrument, the banjo, as an adult beginner with no background in music whatsoever, with the intent of seeing if it's possible to achieve any level of professional skill with just 2,000 hours of practice for a complete noob like me. The he I was referring to at the beginning of this video is my instructor, Mike Leatherman. Information on him, link to his website below. By the way, he is uh, accepting new students and you don't have to see him in person. He does do online instruction. In fact, my boss, a significant other, just started working with him online and is having a great time working with him. So it sounds like he's good, uh, probably as good online as he is in person. I work with him in person. But again, my boss's significant other is really enjoying working with Mike online. The song I was working on at the beginning of this video was, if you didn't recognize it, Foggy Mountain Breakdown. Now, I know I have quite a few new songs that I'm working on, and Foggy Mountain Breakdown is kind of a bit older of a song. I've got, you know, Wayfaring Stranger, I have Eastbound and Down. Those are much newer songs that I should be working on but I'm bringing attention back to Foggy Mountain Breakdown for a very good reason. Now, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I've got a problem with volume and tone when I'm playing. I tend to play too quiet. And when I play and I do get the volume, it is temporary and the volume goes back down and Mike's constantly telling me, get that volume back up. It gets up and then it goes back down. It's so much so that on my whiteboard that I put notes on what to focus on for the, the coming week of practice, volume is almost always at the top because I always need to work on it. Now, I thought I was being clever and I thought I came up with this great technique, this great practice that's gonna get my volume up. And it worked, but it caused other problems and this is where foggy mountain breakdown gets involved but let me explain exactly what i was doing this window behind me even though i keep the blinds closed typically during videos is at the front of my house beyond this window is the sidewalk the street on the other side of the street another sidewalk my neighbors walk by the dogs with the neighbors they walk by cars go by i figured what i would do is i'd open up the blinds open up the window and i would practice and the goal would be to practice loud enough so that my neighbors on their walks could hear me play. Not just on the sidewalk in front of my house, but on the sidewalk across the street. I wanted to play that loud. And for that purpose, it was successful. I did end up playing nice and loud for my neighbors. Now, you may already know where this is going. If I'm playing for my neighbors, am I practicing. Granted, I was getting practice, getting my volume up, but was I practicing my songs? Was I practicing banjo? No. What happened was I started performing and because I didn't want to sound bad, I started playing primarily just the older songs that I know well as practice which means I wasn't putting a lot of work into Wayfaring Stranger. I wasn't putting a lot of work into Eastbound and Down. The songs I was playing most of the time was Boy Them Cabs Down, Cripple Creek, Cumberland Gap, uh, Will the Circle Being Broken, and Foggy Mountain Breakdown. Now, Foggy Mountain Breakdown is new-ish. I don't know it that well. I certainly know it better than Eastbound and Down, and I know it better than Wayfaring Stranger, but I don't know it as good as Cripple Creek and Cumberland Gap and Boil Them Cabbage Down. But it did make my rotation on what I was playing for the neighbors when I opened up the window. Now here's where the problem comes in. I wasn't playing it well, but 
I was playing it well enough that I figured the neighbors would hear just good, just, would hear the song just fine considering it's going through a window and there's traffic and dogs barking and stuff like that. It didn't need to be clean. It just needed to be good enough. And so that's how I played or practiced Foggy Mountain Breakdown. So you can see where the problem is. I never, I got stuck in a trap where I wasn't improving on Foggy Mountain Breakdown. I was, certainly wasn't improving on Eastbound and Down Wayfaring Stranger because I wasn't really practicing those. And I was letting bad technique slide as an excuse that it was good enough for what the people walking on the street would hear. Now what happened was, <clears throat> it was later, I was practicing later in the day. I didn't have the win window open. I wasn't practicing for the practicing for my neighbors and I was playing Foggy Mountain Breakdown and I realized that this is not good. I'm not playing it that, that well. In fact, there's, there's a couple of parts of the song, particularly, I know there's a lot of hammer-ons in the song, but there's a part of the song where, um, the part that I was playing at the beginning of this, of this video, where that hammer-on really needs to be defined. And, and when I was playing it, it wasn't. It was coming out muffled. I was, I was overextending the, the middle finger. And that, although that, that's good. Well, now I can't get it to come out bad because I've been practicing it so much. It was kind of like that. Well, that's not bad. And, it was important because that particular part of the song, that hammer-on really kind of makes the song. Um, let me try to get to it. You notice how that, that has a really significant hammer-on for that song. It really just makes the song. And it wasn't coming out good and I was letting that slide. So I brought it to my, my instructor's attention, Mike's attention, and, and yes, we discussed it. And we discussed the whole idea of, you can't let things slide. You do have to recognize when you're having a problem with the song and you have to address it. And it's really a battle of ego. Like you really have to overcome an ego. Another good example of that is with Eastbound and Down. Now I've gotten back to practicing Eastbound and Down, and Eastbound and Down has a lot of tricky areas in the song. Uh, particularly, and I think I mentioned this in the last video, there's a part where you have an, an A chord, and that goes to an F chord. And that is really, really tricky. It's been really tricky for me to work on that one. This is a loop that I've been using. Very basic. And it's been working wonders. Something as simple as that has really been working wonders with that uh, chord progress progression from A to F. But what's interesting is in Eastbound and Down, I mentioned that there's a lot of tricky parts, that one being the most tricky. There are other parts of the song that are not that tricky that I'm not good at, yet I wasn't turning it into a loop and drilling on it. I was just letting it slide, knowing that I couldn't play it well but figuring, you know, it's fine. I'll keep practicing the song. That part of the song will iron out on its own. And there's this part towards the end of the song. It is the end of the song. And it's very, very simple. That's it. And that leads into the next, uh, the chorus. F chord. Okay, I'm getting I'm getting off track. So it, it's just this, and it's 
it seems so simple, but I couldn't do it. But because it seems simple, I didn't think I needed to drill on it the way I did with the A to F transition. And I caught myself and it's like, no, no, Mark, cut it out. You're not good at that part of the song. Any part of the song that you're not good at, you need to turn into a loop and you need to drill on it. And it's really been quite amazing, this, this kind of epiphany that I've had over the past couple of months about how much you really need to battle your own ego when you're practicing to make sure you're addressing all the issues that you have with the songs that you're trying to play and not just let parts skate by because you think it's easy. It's like, oh no, you know what? I, I know how to play the, the G major neutral zero chord. So I, I, if I could do that, then I can, I can do. And that'll come along in time, no worries. I don't, I don't need to pay attention to that. No, no. You need to tell yourself, that's not, that's not what it, how it works. If, if there's a problem area with the song, you need to turn it into a drill and you need to address it. And so that's what I do. I, I sit there as a drill and then To the point where most of my practice these days is loops, drills of loops done fairly slowly. I'm not doing a lot of songs. Yes, I do play the songs. Um, well, this is how I have it broken down, particularly with the new songs or the songs that I don't know as well as the much older songs. I still break them down into all the parts that I'm having issues with, turn them into loops and then do drills on them. The other songs that like um, Cripple Creek and stuff like that, I will play the whole songs and I'll use those for my speed skills. I'll, I'll work on those to try to play very fast or increase, increase my speed and that's fine. I will play those full songs. But for something like Wayfaring Stranger, It's all, it's all good um, in a way, but there are so many sections that I still drill. I, I will sit there. Same with this one. Whoops. I'll drill that one. It's just, it's all just drills. And then when I'm done with my drills, I'll go ahead and I'll play the song like two or three times just to make sure that I still have the full song in my memory. And I'll work through Foggy Mountain Breakdown that way. I'll work for Wayfaring Stranger that way. I'll work for Eastbound and Down that way. Even, even um, Mana Constant Sorrow, I'm kind of bringing back and working on that in loops because I, I don't know, it, it's, it's amazing how perishable some of these finger positions are. For example, with Mana Constant Sorrow, you have this. And I'm nailing it right now, but I was practicing it quite a bit earlier today. It's amazing how quick that uh, falls apart if I don't drill on it. I'm hoping at some point, <laughs> I'm hoping at some point that I won't have to deconstruct older songs and I could just play them. I'm not there yet. I just need to be very honest with my skill level, honest with the issues that I'm having with the song, and then go back, even with songs that I know. For example, uh, my instructor noticed with uh, um, Cripple Creek even, that I was, when I was doing the, the slide, I was 
letting kind of letting the finger go and not completing the slide so it wasn't it wasn't sounding good and crisp so even with even songs as old as cripple creek are not immune to this and i can't sit there and go it's like no 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 i've i've got that i'm good on cripple creek i don't need to go back and make that any better i do i do need to go back and make it better I need to go back whenever there's an issue. If my instructor spots an issue, no matter how old the song is, I need to go back. I need to check my ego. I say, yes, you're still a beginner. You're going to be a beginner for a while. It's okay. Go back, work on it, work towards perfection. And hopefully this will be the path to becoming great. All right, everybody. I've kind of yammered on quite a bit. Um, oh, I all totally forgot. We are at uh, 676 hours, so we are definitely on track to break 700 hours by the end of the year. I think honestly, we may get to close to like 730 to 750 hour, 750 hours by the end of the year, which would be amazing. That would be quite the catch up um, from the three months that I missed from the injured finger. So that will be amazing. Uh, I think we're on track, we'll, we'll do it. We'll do, I'm, I'll make it happen. Uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in, everybody. I've got some drills and some practice to work on. I will see you next time. Bye.